get to that, but I'd love to talk to John about yesterday. John, welcome back to the DP show. Dennis, it's dawn yes. and morning in America again. Wow. I'm very happy to hear you say that. It took, it took me aback for a second. All right, why don't you amplify on that? Well, look, you know, this is very much what Ronald Reagan reminded us back in the 70s when Jimmy Carter got elected. He said to a meeting of his aides and advisors in 1977 after Jimmy Carter won and Democrats had two-to-one control of both houses of Congress, he said, look, this happens when voters are dissatisfied with some of the things we've done and when the other side has a candidate who campaigns as a moderate. But he won't govern as a moderate. He will govern as a liberal. And when he governs as a liberal, he will fail because we know liberalism fails. And when it fails, people will notice. They'll get angry. They'll get upset. They'll protest. And then they'll vote the first chance they can get, and they'll try to reverse this left-wing lurch, this, this magic trick that they have played on us. And sure enough, what has just happened? Joe Biden has managed to do what Jimmy Carter took three years to do. He's become Jimmy Carter in 10 months. It's Jimmy Carter 2.0, but on, on speed. Wow. So the question is, uh, for me, because I don't think Biden is the issue, I don't think Kamala Harris is the issue, I think the Democrats and the left are the issue. What, what, what Democratic... Say, I'm sorry, say it again. Biden is their tool. Yes, exactly. But who, what Democratic president wouldn't be their tool? Well, that has unfortunately been our lot, that the parties, which used to be broad tents and have all kinds of different coalitions operating under them, have become polarized. And in the case of the Democratic Party, it's basically been a hostile takeover or perhaps even a friendly takeover by the progressives of the Democratic Party. It's no longer the Democratic Party. It's the secular, quasi-Marxist party. Yes, all right. I, 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 I only was saying that because as unpopular as Biden is, his policies are the same as, in my opinion, virtually any Democrat who would be president would follow. So the question really is or a question is, is this is yesterday a repudiation of Biden or of Democratic policies? All of the above. Go on. Well, look at what was on the ballot in Virginia. Yes, there was Glenn Youngkin versus Terry McAuliffe. Yes, Glenn Youngkin had a positive agenda, repealing the car tax, helping people with uh, increasing the standard deduction and fighting, of course, critical race theory and opening up more charter schools. Virginia only has eight charter schools in the whole state. And Terry McAuliffe was completely negative. He, all he could do was yell Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, and play Halloween during, throughout the fall campaign. So there, of course, you have the Biden unpopularity because Biden has failed. Biden is pursuing far more liberal policies than he said he would in the campaign. At the same time, though, you had local issues that played right to conservative strength, and that's why Glenn Young could won. That's why the Republicans took control of the House of Delegates, and that's why the lieutenant governor of, Virgi of Virginia is now a Jamaican immigrant and former Marine, the first black female ever elected to statewide office. And they also won the attorney general's race with the son of Cuban refugees. See, this to me is is virtually as significant as Youngkin. Attorney General and uh, what was the other position again? Lieutenant Governor and uh, the, the entire House of Delegates, or what we would call, you know, basically the Assembly of Virginia, are now uh, Republican. We'll be back with John Fun. His book is up at DennisPrager.com, Our Broken Elections, which I really want to talk about as well. Let me uh, remind you about a spectacular product, one of the most successful in the history of my show.